Hi guys, today we're going to talk about linear equations with decimals. So I'm going to just quickly show you some whole number linear equations and then I'm going to show you how it works with decimals and you'll see how similar it is. So here this says 2 times x equals 12. So if you recall, we take the inverse of the number next to x, okay? So my first step is to box the variable and draw my wall. You might remember that from LS942A. Okay, we're going to take the inverse of 2 times x. 2 times x. Well, the inverse of 2 times x is divide by 2, right? Inverse of times is divide. And whatever we do to one side of the wall, we do to the other. So we're going to also divide by 2. Our ultimate goal here, and our goal for every equation, is to isolate the variable. That's our goal, okay? So our goal in, in, our, in our x, when we're boxing our x, that's a visual cue to isolate the variable. It's almost like a little reminder we need to isolate the x, okay? So by doing that, we take the inverse operation of what's going on here. So it's 2 times x. So the inverse operation of 2 times x is divide by 2. Divide by 2. This actually becomes 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And x is okay with 1 in front of it, okay? Why do you think x is okay with 1 in front of it? Well, 1 times x is just x. So 1 does not alter x at all. So it's okay to have a 1 in front of it. In fact, all variables have a 1 in front of it. Multiply. Okay, so we're just left with x on this side, which is exactly what x wants, and then 12 divided by 2 is 6. Okay, of course we can check these, just like we checked our other variable equations. So we plug in our 6 for, two, for x, so 2 times 6 has to equal 12, which it does. We got it right. So let's look at this example here. This one says x divided by 2 equals 3. So my first step, box the variable and draw the wall. Okay, I'm going to take the inverse operation of x divided by 2. What's the inverse of division? Well, it's multiply. Okay, and these end up cross-canceling out. And whatever I do to one side of the wall, I do to the other side. So I'm going to multiply here. So I'm left with x equals 3 times 2 is 6. I can check this as well, right? So instead of x, this would be 6 divided by 2 equals 3, and which it does. So we got it correct. So now let's look at it with decimals. You'll see how very, very, very similar this is. So I have an example. 1 and 7 tenths times x equals 86 and 7 tenths. So the steps are the same. Box the variable, draw the wall. You, those are your visual cues. And in fact, if you freeze up on a test or if you have any sort of uh, you know, test anxiety, if you have these sort of visual cues in place, those will kind of jumpstart your brain and activate that memory, that long-term memory to get you going in times when you're a little bit stressed out. So these actually work really nicely. Okay, so we need to isolate our variable, okay? And how we do that is we take the inverse operation of what's going on over here. So we have 1.7 times x. So what's the inverse operation of times? Well, it's divide. So I'm going to divide by 1.7. These end up becoming 1. And whatever I do to one side of the wall, I have to do the other. So I'm going to also divide by 1.7. So now we have a division problem. So let's work it out. Your numerator is your dividend. Your, de your denominator is your divisor. Oop. Why did I do that? <laughs> 1.7. Okay. All right. So what do we know about division? What did we learn? Well, we learned that we can't have a decimal in our divisor. So I need to get rid of this. I need to get rid of that decimal. So I'm going to move it over one spot. Okay. Now it's going to be here, and this is now going to become 17. But whatever I do to my divisor, I have to do to my dividend, so I'm going to move this decimal over one spot. So let me rewrite this over so it's nice and clean. 
So now this is 17 divided by 867. Okay, so now we need to divide it out. So how many times, well, can 17 go into 8? Nope, 8's too small. Can 17 go into 86? It sure can. So let's look at our multiplication chart and see how many times 17 goes into 86. So why don't you do that right now? I'll give you a second. How many times does 17 go into 86? Okay, hopefully you saw it, and it was five times. Oop, that didn't, didn't come out right. Five times. All right, so 17 times 5 is 85. So 6 minus 5 is 1, and bring down the 7. And then how many times does 17 go into 17? Well, that's easy, just one time. So 17 times 1 is 17. So 1 and 7 tenths, or 86 and 7 tenths divided by 1 and 7 tenths is 51. So x equals 51. Of course you can check these out, right? You could check it by multiplying. So 1.7 times 51 should give me 86.7. So let's work it out. 51 times 1.7. Okay. So remember when we were doing multiplication, the first thing is don't worry about the decimal. I'm not going to totally get rid of it, but I'm just not going to think about it for now. So just multiply it out. So 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35. Add a 0. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Add them all up. 7, 5, 6, 8. And then we look at, now we look at the decimals. At the end, I have only one digit to the right of a decimal. So the um, decimal is going to go from here, one spot, okay? One digit, one spot, okay. So 86.7, did we get it right? Yes, we sure did, we got it right, okay? So that is one example of a linear equation. Let's look at another example. We have 9 and 8 tenths equals a over 11.6. Okay, a little bit different, right? Same, same method. Draw a box around the variable. Draw your wall. We have our same goal. Doesn't matter if the variable is on this side or this side. It's the same goal. Isolate the variable. All right, so A is kind of in a bad mood. A is in a bad mood because we have 11.6 right below it, right? So this says A divided by 11.6. So what's the inverse operation of A divided by 11.6? Well, it's multiplied by 11.6. Okay, these end up cross-canceling out. And what we do to one side, we're going to do the same to the other. Okay, so on this side, we're left with a multiplication problem. We have 9.8 times 11.6. So let's work it out. Okay, just multiply it out. Don't worry about the decimals at this point. Okay, give you a chance to write that down. So 6.8 is 48, or 6 times 8 is 48, sorry. 6 times 8 is 48, carry the 4. 8 times 1 is uh, 8, plus 4 is 12. 12, carry the 1. 8 times 1 is 1, 8, plus 1 is 9. Okay, placeholder, get rid of all this work. I like to switch colors when I switch numbers. So 9 times 6 is 54. Carry the 5. 9 times 1 is 9. Plus 5 is 14. Carry the 1. 9 times 1 is 9. Plus 1 is 10. Add everything up. 6, uh, 13. One, one. Okay, now we're going to place our decimals. So we have one digit to the right of this decimal and one digit to the right of this decimal, making it a total of two digits, right? So we're going to start from the far, far end and we're going to move over two spots. And that's where our 
decimal lands. So my answer is A equals 113 and 68 hundredths. Okay, let me just double check it. Yeah, perfect. And then we can also check this, right? We can check this by plugging it in right over here. So instead of A, it would be 113 and 68 divided by 11.6, and it should give me 9.8. And I'm just going to go ahead and check it on a calculator real quick. Just to double check. Yep, we got it right. Perfect. So we got it correct. Okay, so hopefully that made sense to you guys. I suggest you rework these problems on page um, 336 in the textbook. There are several other problems that you can definitely try out, but um, after you're done with this video, take these problems, rework them, try to do them yourself, try to check them, see if you got it right, rewatch the video, and then go on to page 336 and look at the problems as well. And then after that, attempt your homework. Um, don't submit it, wait till the live class so we can discuss any problems you might have. All right, talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.